All right, so let's change the delay time. I'll add a live dot numbox. Change its range to 0 to 5000, as that's the range for our delay time. And we'll connect the output of this numbox to the input of the tap out tilde objects. It's like mine detects my son. It's like mine detects my son. And now in real time, we can change the delay time. I'm going to change that center frequency to 900. So we can hear a bit more of that delayed sound. In fact, let's delete these cables so we only hear the delayed sound. It's a bit soft, so I'll just bring up the main volume. So you can see by just clicking and dragging on this numbox, we can create some very glitchy modulation to our delayed sound. Now what if you want to automate this process? Let's add a metro object with an argument of 4n because we want it to sync to our project tempo. Connect its output to a random object with an argument of 5000 and we'll connect that to the numbox. Connect a trigger to the input of the metro to turn it on and now we have this nice automated glitch. We can change the rate of the metro for a faster modulation. Let me turn off the feedback so we can focus just on the delay time modulation. So that's a pretty cool stutter slash glitch kind of a sound. Now for a more gradual modulation, we could actually connect a cycle tilde object to it. So let's create a cycle tilde object. Now the problem with the cycle tilde object is that it generates numbers from the range of minus 1 to 1. And that's not going to be very useful. So we can scale it to a value of 0 to 5000. But that might be a bit too much. So let's say 500 to 1000. Let's add a number box to control the frequency of this cycle tilde object and connect the scaled signal directly to the tap out objects. And now if we change the frequency of the cycle tilde object, we get this kind of a sound. I think that range is a bit too much, so I'll reduce it a bit. That sounds a bit better, something like a DJ scratch effect. We could speed up the cycle tilde object. We could change it from a cycle tilde to, let's say, a saw tilde object. So that's a bit different. How about phaser tilde? How about the rect object? This sounds more choppy because of the square shape. Sounds pretty cool when the read is quite high. Cool, so that's some interesting processing effects we've created 
by just using the tap in and tap out objects. In the next few tutorials, we look at some more advanced audio processing.